Imagine you tell your friends how easy an exam was only to find out that you actually failed. What would you say in this situation? We could say that you have egg on your face, which means that you're totally embarrassed because you were wrong in that situation. So today you'll learn 24 useful kitchen and food expressions that you can actually use in your daily life. Plus we've included a little test to help you understand and remember these expressions. Also, there's a free downloadable PDF document that you can access at the end of the lesson. But before we get to that, if you want to learn fun, convenient ways to advance your English, then be sure to smash that like and subscribe button so you never miss out on any of our new lessons. Awesome, now let's get to it. So the first one we're going to look at is a whisk. So a whisk is this sort of balloon shaped utensil I have right here. And we usually use this to beat eggs or cream to increase the volume of the mixture. And another meaning of whisk is to suddenly or quickly take someone or something from one place to another. For example, her husband whisked her off to Paris for her birthday. Okay, so this right here is a sieve. We usually use it when we are straining ingredients or like trying to get big particles out of a mixture or like flour when you're baking you want to remove any clumps or lumps in the flour so you would hit it against your hand like that and it's pretty cool for also straining liquids if there's like particles in it the sieve will help to catch those bigger particles and allow the smaller ones through. So a really cool expression with the word sieve is to have a memory like a sieve, which means to forget things easily. For example, you know she has a memory like a sieve. How can you expect her to remember the name of every country in Europe? So here we have a frying pan and a nice expression that you could use related to a frying pan is out of the frying pan and into the fire, which means to go from a bad situation to a worse situation. For example, she lost her job a few months ago. She went out of the frying pan into the fire when she also crashed her car. So this next one is quite common and you've probably heard it in movies and TV series and it is to see the glass half empty or half full. So here we have a great demonstration of a glass half empty and half full. And what this expression means is to see, for example, if the glass is half empty, it means that you're quite a pessimistic person and you're seeing situations as you know, you're looking at the worst parts of situations. You're basically seeing the situation as more negative than positive. But if you see the glass half full, you're quite optimistic, which means that you always look on the bright side of life or you always focus on the positive side instead of the negative side of a situation. So some great examples of this is even though she wasn't successful at the interview, she still sees the glass half full. Another example would be, he never takes a risk because he sees the glass half empty in every situation. So over here, we have a platter with fruit in it today. And we would use the expression to hand something or give something to someone on a silver platter to mean that you're making it easy for them to succeed or for them to get something. So if you give someone something on a silver platter, you're giving it to them without them needing to try or without them needing to work hard. For example, your son should work hard to buy his first car himself. You shouldn't give him everything on a silver platter. Over here we have a fork and a great expression with this word is to fork something out which means to give something or pay someone money with a bit of hesitation. For example, his mom was not ready to fork out a few dollars to pay for his trip. So you might have noticed that I'm wearing an apron. So this is called an apron <laughs> and we have another great expression using the word apron and that is to cut the apron strings and it's usually literally these strings over here to cut those strings. So when someone is tied to someone else's apron strings, you're saying that that person is being influenced or controlled quite a lot, quite greatly by that person. So when we cut those apron strings, we are saying that there is no longer that 
control or that influence in that relationship between those two people. So a great example would be to say, once I graduated from college, my mom had to cut the apron strings. In other words, she was no longer paying for or controlling my life in any way. So over here, we have a greater. And as you can see, we would usually use this to great cheese, which is, you know, always delicious on some toast and other foods. But a nice expression you could use is to say that someone grates you, which means that that person annoys you or they sort of get on your nerves in some way. And a nice example of this is stop chewing so loudly, it's starting to grate on my nerves. So over here we have cookie cutters. And as you know, we use these to cut shapes into the dough before we bake cookies. So we would press them into the dough like that. So an example of this would be to say a cookie cutter person or thing, which means that this thing or person lacks originality or distinction. For example, there are too many cookie cutter houses built in this neighborhood. Speaking of cookies, over here, we have a cookie jar and a nice expression using the word cookie jar is if you catch someone with their hand in the cookie jar, it usually means that they are caught in the act of doing something that they shouldn't be doing, similar to being caught red handed. For example, he only returned the money when he got caught with his hand in the cookie jar. So over here, we have a scoop. And a scoop is an object that we would use for dishing ice cream. You know, when you're dishing your ice cream, you could use a scoop because it's so much easier to use than a spoon, for example. And we have a nice expression using the word scoop, which is to get information, to get the scoop. And this is usually used by journalists. So when journalists get the scoop, they're getting the latest, most interesting information before anyone else does. For example, I was with them when it happened, so I've got the inside scoop. And similar to a scoop, we have a spoon. And a great expression using the word spoon is to say that someone is born with a silver spoon in their mouth. And if you're born with a silver spoon in your mouth, this is usually said with a bit of resentment or disapproval. And it means that you're born into a privileged or rich family. So you grew up quite privileged or rich. In other words, this person is someone that never needed to worry about, you know, lacking anything. They always had what they needed. So a great example of this would be to say, she was born with a silver spoon in her mouth. She's never had a job in her life. Sometimes it can feel like learning a new language is just too expensive. Well, you don't have to be born with a silver spoon in your mouth to be able to afford our real life English app because it's absolutely free. Our Real Life English app allows you to practice your English anytime, anywhere at the press of a button. Plus, you'll have access to real life conversations with our podcast, where we talk about how to best learn English, movies, culture, and so much more. The best part is that you can practice with transcripts and flashcards every single week. So what are you waiting for? Download it right now for free by clicking up here or down in the description or simply search for real life in your favorite app store. Now it's time for a quick quiz. Are you ready? The man worked hard to get what he's got now. It wasn't glass half empty, given to him on a platter, out of the frying pan into the fire. We only saw the celebrity for a few seconds before her manager had a memory like a sieve out of the frying pan into the fire, whisked her away. Could you please repeat that? I have a memory like a sieve, a glass half empty, something on my platter. He was fired because life is a bowl of cherries. He was caught with his hand in the cookie jar. 
he had to fork out money. His adult son is too dependent on him, so I got the scoop. He cut the apron strings. My job is on the chopping block. So over here, we have some salt. And a great expression you could use related to salt is to rub salt into someone's wounds, which means to really make them feel bad or guilty or make them feel even worse than they already do about something. For example, stop rubbing salt in her wounds. She already apologized for her mistakes. Okay, so this next one is related to corn. And the expression that we'll use related to it is to be corny. Something is corny or someone is corny. They are too sentimental, too predictable, and really not original at all. For example, I watched a really corny romantic comedy yesterday. You could also refer to someone as corny, meaning that that person tends to make really sort of awkward and uncomfortable kinds of jokes or they say really awkward things. In other words, they are pretty unoriginal and you can sort of predict the kind of things that they would say. Similar to corny would be cheesy. They mean basically the same thing. So someone who is cheesy is also kind of awkward and unoriginal and they tend to make jokes that just aren't that funny. <laughs> or a corny or cheesy joke is one that's sort of similar to a dad joke. Like you could have predicted the outcome or it's just not that funny. It's kind of like, oh, <laughs> cringe. <laughs> so a great example would be, I know it sounds corny or cheesy, but I'm really not motivated by money. This would be corny or cheesy because it's sort of like something that everyone would say. It's not very original to say that you're not motivated by money, right? So right here we have whipped cream and whipped cream is really delicious, as you know, on desserts and in drinks. But a great expression that you can use related to cream is the cream of a particular industry or a particular area. For example, if I say the cream of the movie industry or the cream of the architecture industry, it would mean that these people are the best of that particular group or in that particular industry. For example, the cream of the movie industry met at the Oscars last week. So here we have slices of beef which here in South Africa, we would say that this is biltong. We call it biltong. <laughs> um, I'm not sure if it has a different name in other countries, but it's basically sliced, spiced, dried beef. And here we have shaved beef, which is basically deli meat. It's meat that you would use on your sandwich. So this next expression that we're going to look at is to have beef with someone. So if you have beef with someone, you have a grudge or a disagreement with that person. And it's not very common to use it in formal situations, but it is very colloquial. It's very informal to talk about a grudge or a disagreement that you're having with someone. So, for example, you could say, why does she have to beef with me? I'm always nice to her. So right now we're going to look at this fruit right here, which is a lemon. And if you were to refer to something as a lemon, it would be something that you bought and then found out that it actually has a lot of problems. It's not working the way it should. For example, the second-hand car I bought was a real lemon. It broke down a week after I bought it. Now, right here, we have bread and butter, right? So if we say that something is your bread and butter, we're saying that it is your main source of income. So for example, you could say, even though I have two jobs, teaching is my bread and butter. So over here, we have milk. And of course, you know what milk is. 
but there are quite a few expressions using the word milk. And a nice one that you could use is to say, there's no use crying over spilt milk. So when something spilled, it obviously was an accident. It didn't happen on purpose. You didn't intend for it to spill usually. So if you cry over spilled milk, you are, you know, feeling regretful or feeling sorry for yourself because, you know, of a mistake or something that went wrong. So you could use this in a sentence such as, stop complaining about failing the test. There's no use crying over spilt milk. So over here we have bananas. And if you go bananas, you're going crazy or you're acting quite silly, or even you actually could be quite mad about something. So bananas, hmm, it would, would definitely depend on the context. So if you go bananas, you could just be acting silly, acting crazy, or you could just be really angry. So now I'm feeling bananas about the situation. For example, she will go bananas when you tell her the bad news. All right, so the opposite of going bananas would be to be as cool as a cucumber. And this basically means to be really calm, to be chilled, to just, you know, relax, cool as a cucumber. And you're usually using this in a situation where things are quite chaotic and you're as cool as a cucumber. So you could say, for example, she was really nervous, but she acted as cool as a cucumber. So right here, I have a pie. A nice expression related to pie is to eat humble pie, which means that you would behave or act in a way that shows other people that you were wrong or you were mistaken about something. So a nice example of eating humble pie would be to say, the politician was forced to eat humble pie and apologize to the public. So the last expression that we're going to look at today is to be toast. And that means to be in serious trouble or to be, you know, defeated or ruined. For example, if his boss finds out he lied, he's going to be toast. All right, guys, now it's time for the final quiz. A lemon is something that is old, doesn't work well, is disgusting. A synonym for corny is unoriginal, obvious, sentimental. If something is your bread and butter, it is your favorite activity, biggest expense, main source of income. To go bananas means to be happy, be excited, be angry. If someone is toast, they are defeated, determined, delighted. So, how did you do on the quiz? Now it's your turn. Why not be as cool as a cucumber and practice writing a few sentences using the expressions we've covered in today's lesson? Share them down in the comments. We look forward to reading them. Also, we've got a treat for you. Simply click on the link in the description to receive the PDF document for today's lesson. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson as much as I did. And if you would like to keep learning new vocabulary with us, then be sure to watch this lesson next. So if you're like me and you love changing your hair quite often, or if you don't and you're just curious to learn about hair and self-care vocabulary, then today's lesson is for you. So I've put together a PDF document with a list of words and phrases that we'll cover in today's lesson to help you remember everything you learned today. So stick around until the end of the lesson as I'll reveal how to access it. Plus, I'll be changing my hair too, so stick around for that as well.